Good morning. Another little job for you. On my Todd. I'm uh, just taking a sycamore out in the back garden. It's over a, a greenhouse naturally. Um, and <laughs> someone's had a go on the other side of basically taking out half the tree. Um, so now it needs to come out. The idea was for it to come out anyway, but yeah, you can kind of you can see that half the tree's gone, which is good. Less less uh, less work for me, I suppose. We can keep it all on this side. And the neighbour's been uh, been good about us letting me park on the drive. So so yeah. First things first, I'm gonna just move some stuff from here. Just chucked it over there, just so I can have a nice access to the uh, to the stump. There it is. Pretty straightforward. Garage there as well, but I'm hoping I can throw everything from kind of there where the stem is. Throw it over this, over the greenhouse, and have it land there. And hope for nothing bounces, and it's that. I mean, it's a lot, it's a lot better on the other side. It's just soil, but um, I would rather get it all here to be honest than drag it out. So yeah, that's what I'll do. I think. I'm pretty excited today because I've um, got a new, well, say new saw, it's an old saw. I spent a small fortune on it. Um, and just getting it up and running again. And it's, it's not going to be a most reliable or anything, but it was just a bit of a project. And um, yeah, put far too much money back into it to get it going. But uh, yeah, it's a 390, still 390, 2002 model. So I'm going to give it a go on this stem, see a uh, so it first see if it runs I've got the hexa chain on it which still kindly sent me and um, I've got an Oregon bar on it as well which I've not used before other than the, the one I've got on my, tool, uh, my 200 the uh, speed cut nano one and uh, the only other news really is that I had no coffee this morning in the house so I had to go and spend a million pound on a coffee yeah nicer problems to have the client is actually next door, where they've kind of already had half the work done on a tree. Um, he's spoken to the neighbour who's guarding them in now, but they're still in bed and it's like nine o'clock. Um, he told them that I was coming on Thursday, I think, and it's today's Wednesday. So I did tell them last night that I was coming today, but it's not a problem. But it might get a bit of a shock when I kick up a chainsaw. <laughs> bar oil as well. I've, in the past I've used, well we used uh, the Husqvarna one which I really like but I did a bit of research into the different types of bar oil. And so it doesn't get that cold in the UK. So you don't need like a really, well it handles cold weather or even the opposite where it's like hot weather. So I've gone for, um, the name just left me as soon as the Press record, forget what it's called. But if you um any that you can recommend, any bar oils, just let us know what you're using. It's not really something that we really talk about, which is best, you know what I mean? And for for which saws, I've never really everyone just kind of just uses anything, just from what I understand. No one's ever said, Oh, use it, we only use this oil because it's the best. A bit like with um two stroke oil, I always use uh, stills. HP Super and I use a uh, super unleaded fuel I just find that it's a lot less smoky and you can kind of leave the fuel in the tank as well if you're not you, you, I use an army two stroke equipment I've got like a little a little strimmer that I use for for, um, for doing the back garden and I only use that once every once a week and then all winter it's just sat there so it, I tend to find it's not congeal in the tank but yeah bar oil what do you use I don't know what's, what's the best, so what would you recommend? Let us know in the comments below. It's one of the mornings where it rained all night. So everything's wet, but it's going to dry out.
I think I might put an anchor point in first. So that's the other drop zone there. As you can see, <laughs> everything's just on one side. Yeah, I think I'll climb up there, put a rope up, and then start at the bottom. You still got a line in there. I've just sharpened my spikes as well in there. I think they're on the way out. Not very long. I might have to uh, get some new gaffs. <laughs> Just flip it there. That's the top, so it's not a big tree. Not that long at all. But I am on my own, I've got to get rid of it also. And hopefully that, that red car will get moved. Or a double rope, I think. Get this stem out first, I think. Get it out of the way. <clears throat> Let's see the green eggs there. Mate, didn't tap long, did it? Oh, shit. This way can get a bit cocky. I throw a big piece in the butt end, it's the edge of that green eye. You know, like that, just missed. That gardener's done quite well, really, getting these. I don't know if he's done it off a ladder or something. Like that. Oh, yes. Fantastic. So I've got to do all this thing, otherwise I'd just be talking to myself, wouldn't I? Get rid of this stem, I think, here. May as well, aren't I? Tree's never the problem. It's always the location. So I'm worried if I drop them there, they might shoot off that way. I can hit some on the way. Whereas if at least if I throw it right over there, it's just gonna make a bit of a dent in the grass. And um, all this wood's going for firewood, so I'm probably just gonna cut it small in the tree. Instead of doing it down there, I can just throw it in smaller pieces.
got these bits to do now and then Mr. Bart has a little little tip here for you. If um see normally if you had a drop zone you'd we could just drop these off. You just start at the bottom and obviously work your way up, which is what I'm doing. However, I mean it doesn't really matter on the on the garage, but if you had a, if that greenhouse was there, every time you cut something, even if you're holding it, it's gonna flop down onto the garage or the greenhouse or whatever it is. So what I sometimes do, if, if they're quite leggy like this, where they're not, or the branches aren't stuck in each other, is maybe leave a couple at the bottom, like a, to catch it basically. So I'll use these as an example, they're only small, but what you can do is if these are a bit bigger, um, you can just cut them straight off and obviously it's going to fall down but the, the branch underneath it catches it so you can keep hold even if you're you know, one hand in a saw or whatever if you're into that kind of thing you can see it's not going to it's not going to go anywhere it's resting on that instead of it dropping down obviously if it's the type of tree that's going to get caught on everything then it makes it really hard work but this way now you can just control it by just pulling it out like that and then do what you want with it you've not dropped it straight on the straight on the roof so that's something that I, I do it just just saves you you know I'm not, save you holding things as well you know it's just resting there not doing anything you know it's safe and you can just put it wherever you want and if it's a bigger tree then obviously if you're rigging you could do it as well but it is going to get caught on the stuff below, so you need to know that you can pull it out. Um, but if I, if I was rigging it, you'd just start from the bottom and probably cradle it off. So there you are, a little tip for you. So I took these ones out here now. This, these ones won't hit the roof. And what you can do, because all these are gone, where I was kind of stuck here before, all these are gone now, so you can actually go out to these a lot easier, these lower ones. And you don't, again it's just an example, I don't need to come out here, but you get the idea. So you can come a lot further out now and man handle this, as opposed to it just dropping down, with before you'd struggle to get out here. Um, just because all these limbs run the way. And now it just makes it really... It's easy to just get these more manageable pieces. Oh, some bird poo on here. You get the idea. Oh. Should have kept them gloves on, man. Linging. The wind's getting a bit cheeky now. Top. It's quite a big one to hold, really. I don't want to stand on there. Slingy job. Definitely need some long spikes. 
but you know, probably take probably take me a few months to get around to getting them. Ten to nine, ten to nine, ten to ten. Okay, bye time. The battery's going, so I'll probably get a bit of this on and then get down and get the bigger saw, get a new battery. Spent the last probably half an hour, maybe just getting all the uh, getting all the brush out of there. That's all. Maybe it's just all here now. All the little piles, like one here, one there. Two, three, four. Just like an easy cart it out. I didn't. Uh, it's getting a bit windy now. I didn't film Max. It's not very exciting, is it? But that's what's left of the stem anyway. So just a case of uh, chogging that down. I've got a few, a few small logs here from uh, from the, the two stems at the top. But I've got someone coming picking that up, I think. So uh, yeah, I think we'll get all this out first and then start doing the stem. So everything's started up now. <coughs> well, everything's in uh, in the van, all the brass base, everything that was in piles is now in the van. Managed to get it all in. Easy really, fits it in quite nice. Problem is now, um, it's going to be a bit tricky to stun the bath. So there's the uh, the stem, and this is like the drop zone. Where's the greenhouse? This is a bath. As you can see, there's shrub, and then if I drop on this side. There's all that glass down there. I mean, I've still got to fish out of there, but I think I'm just going to get some of this stuff, put it next to there, and just try and drop it here. Move my rope bag and try and get it down there. It's either that or throw it on the other side and drive round, but then it's just going to land in that all that topsoil area. He's done that last weekend. He's going to obviously do some landscaping or something with that, so. Yeah, I'm going to do, just try and do it small, I think, and just get them in here. See what happens. Just realised this bath is full of water. Oh, that stinks, man. <laughs> try and create some sort of barrier.
some bits out. There we go. Little one seven one saves the day. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, it's, a, it's a shame that really. I've got one uh, one cut with it, so it's got a bit of sawdust on it. But yeah, it's same as exact same thing happened with my two hundred. It just needs a bit of a tune up. It's not really something you can do at home. Yeah, just give it a tune up up here. 171. This is my first ever chainsaw. This before I was even even doing tree work. Saved the day. Say hello on the YouTube. <laughs> 